Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. It's my birthday, sadly. But because it's my birthday, I decided let's go over the debut full length from Immolation Dawn of Possession. One of my favorite death metal records from Anno 1991. Sorry, I almost said 92. But 1991 happens to be one of those years in the history of death metal that is just filled to the brim with classics from demos to full lengths and beyond. And I feel like Dawn of Possession by Immolation, it's just, like, as much as I love, like, here and after, and, like, just, the, Immolation's one of those bands where even they're, like, semi-popular albums are still, like, top tier like something that's kind of I dare say mediocre for immolation is still 99% better than most modern death metal bands and that includes new immolation material but like close to a world below when they were still on metal blade that record that's something that legitimately grew over like like over a very long time period to become one of my like favorite death metal records ever like at first i kind of thought i was like oh like this is fucking sick like i like it and all but you know i didn't feel like it touched dawn of possession or like failures for gods you know but then the more and more I listened to it, and like kind of the older I got, I was just like, yo, like Immolation's one of those bands where, you know, you kind of, aside from like drumming and stuff, you like have a lot of the same personnel that matter a lot on this release. And like, I know a lot, like, you know, has changed and stuff, but, like, you still have Ross Dolan on vocals and bass. You still have Robert uh, on guitar, who, if you've ever seen Immolation live, like, Robert, is now he no longer has long hair, but, like, oh my, he legit, like, it's like he's fighting off, like, angels with his guitar, playing some of the most evil riffs in death metal history. Like, if you've ever seen Immolation Live, he's the bald one that's... Like, it's it's sick. Like, he he's one of the few people, like, when it comes to guitar playing and death metal, it's just like, fuck, dude. Because like, it, it's just, it's, it's airtight, too. And I love that Immolation tours a lot with Blood Incantation. And it's always just a good time. I've seen Immolation with Blood Incantation, I think, four times. And every time has been a fucking blast. But... And I'm quoting um, Vicky from Pyra Press here. She called this out, and I have to back her on this. Because uh, she has, if, again, if you've ever seen Immolation Live, you might notice they have merchandise for every single one of their releases. Even some of the less popular ones. And it's just one of those things, like, can you hear us? Death to Jesus. But, no, seriously, like, they have shirts for every album. 
doesn't matter how popular it was. Like, remember when, like, Scion got involved with shit? Like, Scion, that car company, I remember they did, like, an immolation EP. I think it was an EP. I think, uh, I don't remember the title of it. They might have even done a full length under Scion. But I'm just drawing a blank. But... For me, like, for the longest time, the immolation demos, which are kind of unfuckable, like, they're just, like, when it comes to death metal demos, the immolation demos, I really wish they were a little bit easier to get your hands on. Like, they're kind of honestly hard to, like, pretty much somebody needs to do a bootleg or an official, like, reissue. But Corpse Gristle was rad enough last Christmas to do a cassette box set, and Nuclear Blast did also. And uh, you have Here and After, Failures for Gods, and Close to a World Below. So licensed by Metal Blade and reissued on 200 box sets. There's like a color version and the black and white version. And I got this from Extremely Rotten Productions, but this is the um, Listenable Records reissue. I think uh, it was Roadrunner that originally did this. But um, I threw the second side on with, like, No Forgiveness, Burial Ground, After My Prayers, Fallen Disease, and Immolation. But side one, Into Everlasting Fire, was one of the sickest fucking songs by Immolation. Despotent Souls That Dawn of Possession, Those Left Behind, I fucking love that song. And Infernal Decadence, so good. This is like one of those New York death metal records. Essential, hands fucking down. But just in the history of death metal, yeah, it's just one of those records. And also, I always found this super fucking cool. And I don't know if this was on purpose, but I always kind of thought it was just paying a little bit of homage. Because I do know Paul Ledney, like, friends with Immolation when he was in Incantation. But it's like a sleazier version of the Dawn of Possession cover. Like, where here we have demons just ripping angels out of the sky. Here we have demons doing kind of greasy things to um, angels, as you can see right there. And this is probably one of my favorite... Pro Fanatica releases. Like, hands down, the curling flame of blasphemies, like, so heavy, and yeah, it's just one of those bangers right here. Like, I really love the last two, like, you know, Pro Fanatica records. But, if you're an Immolation fan, like, of their new record, which I have not heard yet, so sadly that will not be on the year-end list, just because I haven't heard any of it. But if it sounds anything like Immolation, which I'm sure it does, I'm sure it fucking rules. This is on gold vinyl. It might be a hundred. I, I forget, honestly. I don't know, though, but I can tell you one thing. When it comes to these um, listenable reissues, which I think come from, like, Ro I think Roadrunner originally or Road Racer in 91. It might have still been Road Racer. But, um... 
I, I just love that little piece of the cover art right there. But I've been listening to this record like pretty much once a day since I got it. And like when I used to have a copy of it, I again pretty much listened to it at least three times a day when delivering pizza. Yeah, especially when delivering pizza. This is one of those just definitely got played a lot. And I have to put it. See, this. The bane of my existence. Shrink wrapped covers. Because I'm all out of vinyl sleeves so luckily i happen to have one left so it might look kind of sloppy but hey keeps my record in good shape and that's all that matters see you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes like yeah i know it's all crinkly but hey you know, it's better than just having the shrink wrap on there. So, you know, can't, beggars can't be choosers. And I'm going to put this on the turntable so I can just get into the gloomy reflection of our hidden sorrows 120% so we can go over this bad boy. It's just my birth my birthday and i'm not trying to sound selfish but i had been kind of saving the immolation review for my birthday just to talk about a record that it's important and i just knew i would enjoy talking about it and i have and i need to just point out how much I love when Dark Descent Records get together with Dark Symphonies slash The Crypt and put out some hard to get death metal on vinyl. Like, this is a double LP version of the gloomy reflection of our hidden sorrows where the chaos records version was just a single lp this is also 180 gram vinyl has the 199 has both 1990 well it has the 1990 demo and the ep from 1990 as well as the eternal disgrace ep from 1991 so you get just it's so gnarly because I also have the cassette, which has. Let me see what demos this has real quick. Because I know this has the track Evoked Doom. And I think that might. Oh, nope. It's on here. Compilation 1992. Fuck. So, yeah, this is legit. The essential definitive version of the gloomy reflection of our hidden sorrows yep absolutely but still it's awesome having this shit on cassette with the original artwork but again like i said this is a crypt dark descent dark symphonies release they didn't fuck around with that shit that poster back there. Yeah. But the Extremely Rotten cassette. If you can get your hands on this, highly recommended. But this might be easier to find. But I'm not trying to be a dick here. The Chaos Records version. Yeah, I, I was told it, it's pretty boof compared to this. I'll put it this way. If... Some, a classic release like this gets reissued by a record label and then immediately, less than a year after, you get a reissue like this. 
there was obviously something wrong with the other reissue and the crypt dark descent and dark symphonies absolutely <laughs> fixed whatever problems existed on the chaos records version and yeah double lp 180 gram vinyl colored amazing sound and like i said i want to make sure this is on the turntable all music and all music and lyrics by cenotaph 1992 mastered from the original dat tape fuck yeah and that's a killer reissue but so is like i'm not trying to hate but like to me, this is the way I wish all reissues were, like, done. Or, honestly, the head rot. I haven't gone over it yet. I might tomorrow and kind of finish, like, the classic shit I've been wanting to go over. Because this would finish the classics. And that is head rot. This is an extremely rotten productions double LP and seven inch compilation reissue. This has everything that Head Rot put out. Look at how sick this shit is. Like everything about this is just gorgeous. Like I I love the seven inch art. Look at that. Oh, so sick. And this is on uh, red vinyl, the actual, like, you get the lyrics, oh my god, they did such a good fucking job on this set. Like, I was gonna do, like, a reissue of the year video, but I was like, ah, like, that's, like, look at that artwork. And, oh, barf bag not included. The head rots, like, like, I gulp your guts. The agonizing sufferance of dismemberment. This is such a sick fucking collection of death. 1991, 92. I don't know if this is 180 grams. For some reason, I feel like it was. But really nice red vinyl. Again, double LP. And you get the 7 inch. You get all the material. Demo number one, 1991. Yeah, it's just so fucking sick. Extremely rotten. Really, really killed it here. Like, almost a Svart-level reissue. Svart normally have, like, gnarly books and shit, just because they have a little bit more of a budget than Extremely Rotten, but Extremely Rotten, to me, put out more shit that's up my alley. Obviously, like, Head Rot. Grotesque Infection. Afterbirth. Entity. I'm just looking at some of my extremely rotten LPs. But, yeah. Some sick shit. But, back to Immolation real fast. When it comes to death metal, I think everyone watching this video should already know how gnarly Dawn of Possession is. And if not, I hope this video helps you realize this is one of the best death metal records from the East Coast and just when it comes to evil sounding ripping death metal. Fuck yeah, it doesn't get much better than Immolation and their debut full length, Dawn of Possession, and again... I love that kind of nod to Donna Possession that Profanatica did. 
And again, I don't even know if that's a nod, but that was like where my brain immediately went to when I... Even if you watch my old review of this, I bring up the cover reminding me of uh, that bad boy. Immolation, Dawn of Possession. And there's nothing wrong with that. But also, if you're going to check out Dawn of Possession, you have to check out Here and After, Failures for Gods, and Close to a World Below to totally get the immolation experience, in my opinion. As well as the demo shit. If you can get the demo shit, I think the first demo is 88. Might be 89. But, like, you just get that kind of classic New York... New York fucking death metal, you know, fucking not as brutal as fucking suffocation, but you get that fucking, you know, Long Island type, well, they're not from Long, you get that New York fucking death, like, because if you read Suffocation's lyrics back on Effigy, they're evil as fuck. You know, there's no I bathe in entrails of you, but like, you know, holy book of God, holy book of lies. Cool shit, but like, yeah, immolation lyrically, like, you know, some of the most evil lyrics in death metal. Like, Glenn Benton, I always felt like Glenn should have taken notes from like, other bands and their evilness, because, um... There just came a point in like Deicide's career, and I'm not I'm not talking shit, but it just seemed to me like lack of trying. It might have been the record, The Stench of Redemption, that was after Scars of the Crucifix, but I just remember there being a song titled Mad at God. And just being like are you even, like, you're not even trying. Like, I'm sorry, you're not trying. If one of your song titles is Mad at God. Like, what? This is coming from, you know, the people that wrote Legion and Once Upon the Cross. And it's like, Mad at God? Really? Like, sounds like you're mad at your dad for, like, saying you can't play video games. I don't know, it's just something, it always kind of, like, it was like, there was a Six Feet Under song. Uh, uh, it was on that Maximum Carnage album. And I just remember, like, the, the lyrics, it's like, Die, motherfucker. Die. Die. And it's just, like, a stupid, like, it sounds like an angry sixth grader, like, wrote the lyrics, like, I don't know, it, it is what it is, I mean, you know, <laughs> but it, it's kind of funny when, like, you go back and, and, like, you listen to it now, and it's just like, oh my goodness, this is terrible, it, but it doesn't get better slash worse than snakes. <laughs> Six Feet Under, Snakes, the death metal song of the millennia. <laughs> like, that needs to be put, like, in a museum. And, uh, maybe a, a thousand years from now, when our existence is wiped out, you know, the next group of civilization comes in. And they're like, huh, what's this? Six feet under, snakes. And, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's the silliest, worst song ever. But on the opposite end of that, Immolation, Dawn of Possession, one of the best albums ever in death metal. And just in general, it's fucking nearly perfect. Like, if you're a fan of 
You know, you don't even need to be a death metal fan to be an Immolation fan. That's They're one of those bands I feel kind of transcends those boundaries. Like, if you appreciate, like, just well-played music, again, you can't really go wrong with Immolation's approach. Because musically, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, really, it's super gnarly while not being overly like look at me and how technical like you know like there's none of that nonsense it's ridiculous when it needs to be less is more but at the same time there's just something about that immolation new york fucking death metal sound that's just timeless and that's the word I was looking for. Dawn of Possession just has this timeless, evil death metal sound. Often imitated, never duplicated. Thanks for watching as always. I'm gonna get back to babysitting my nephew who is watching Gremlins and taking a little nap. So... Thanks for watching as always, you fucking rule. Hails. Yeah.